Yet another liberal scandal caused the Conservatives to come out guns a-blazing. As a result, Greg Fraser was unable to control the bedlam and the mayhem that happened in the House of Commons. It's a fun watch. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. So the employment minister, Randy Bassano, who's been under some scrutiny ever since he's tried to claim that a text message that he got for unscrupulous behavior was another Randy, a different person with exactly the same name in his two-person company. The conservatives have not let it go, which is fine. I don't believe that any corrupt politician should be permitted to sit in their seat. And now it comes to light that he was attempting to commit genetic fraud by lying on his paperwork and his company is under a lot of scrutiny for, for being fraudulent. And company that he owns got money while he's sitting at the table, ca- the cabinet table. So this is not just one thing. This is a bunch of things. And the conservatives come out, let him have it. The Speaker of the House tried to contain them, tried to control them, tried to, you know, like he always does. He, he didn't mute the microphone as much, so he must have heard about that petition that's going around. There is no reason for the conservatives to let up on what is clearly has to be called to the attention of the of the public. Now, some of you may not be aware that before the excitement of question period, there is time set aside for what is called member statements. And they get to say anything they want if, as long as it pertains to politics or the news of the day. Sometimes they offer a tribute to one of their constituents. Sometimes they offer condolences. Sometimes they talk about the political... Uh, realm that's happening it just depends on what they choose the speaker of the house and the liberal party in general the conservatives and fortunate for us though the conservatives started their call out of uh, the employment minister Bassano in the member statements so i want you to watch this because it's 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 important it lends to the tone of the day (laughs) it's funny (laughs) that liberal minister falsely claimed indigenous identity His company received government contracts using that stolen identity, apparently while consorting with cocaine dealers, and all while he was a sitting minister of the Crown. What kind of a message is the government sending by allowing him to sit in cabinet? As Jody Wilson-Raybould said today, the Prime Minister is making a mockery of reconciliation and is enabling, quote, white people playing ancestry wheel of fortune. That fraudulent minister must resign or the Prime Minister must fire him. Um, And it is... Order, please. I was listening very attentively to the Honourable Member's uh, statement uh, and for most of the statement it was was, uh, within the bounds. The last uh, sentence by... Uh, impugning a member directly is not uh, uh, permitted in this place. I'm going to ask the honorable member just to withdraw uh, that word so that we can move on. So what he's asking her to do, what he, there's a word in, the, in her statement that impugns on his honor. See, that's what's important, right? This guy who's committed fraud, who lied about so many things, who stood on the microphone and, and slammed Tucker Carlson and demanded that he not be permitted to come into his writing somehow is under the protection of parliamentary privilege and we have to consider him to be honorable. This is what the uh, chair is asking of the member to re- withdraw one of the words from the quote that she gave. Here, <laughs> here is her response and then the speaker's response to her <laughs> response. I'm telling you. She doesn't have questions coming up. 
and I will come back to the honourable member immediately following question period so that we can start this on time. <laughs> So a couple of times he asked her to withdraw. She stood up. She says, I'm not doing it. I refuse. <laughs> and now the liberal side is all crying in their, in their cornflakes, you know, over there. They're like, what are we going to do? <laughs> She's just called this guy a fraud. We know he's a fraud. She's only quoting what somebody else has set out in, in Alberta, right? Like, you know, out West <laughs> where this guy's riding is. I mean, he's in Edmonton Center. <laughs> oh, and the best that Greg Fraser can come up with is please sit there and think quietly while we'll come back to you at the end so we don't run out of time and in question period. Thank you. <laughs> That's just the beginning of Greg Frazier's day. Like, if he'd have been smart, he would have just tapped out, brought in one of the deputy chairs, and le <laughs> left the room. I'm telling you. The round finishes, the member statement finishes, and then uh, the House of the Conservative House leader, Andrew Scheer, stands up. And of course, he wants to be talking about it too. I'm telling you right now that, that there were at least 20 times during the House today, like, that they all spoke about this Randy issue, and rightfully so. How many scandals are we going to let these liberals get away with? How much money are they going to steal from the Canadian people? How much more? Are they just treating our country like a gigantic ATM? Anyway, now the House leader stands up first question in the, in the question period, and... You know, I cut out like some of the segment, but this is how essentially it went. Details about the employment minister's scandal. And yesterday we learned that his company shares a mailing address with an international drug trafficker who's been busted for cocaine not once, but twice. He's been caught out in falsehoods, caught faking Indigenous identity to try to secure government contracts meant for real Indigenous people. And his company is under investigation for nine fraud-related counts. Why on earth has the Prime Minister not fired this man? Right. What it'll take for this guy to get fired from this Prime Minister, we do know what will get you fired. Remember Jody wilson Rainbow? Yeah. She was fired for telling the truth about the Prime Minister's attempts to interfere in a criminal case. Here's what she had to say. A Prime Minister committed to true reconciliation would have removed this Minister and the other Randy from Cabinet long ago. Instead, we get to watch white people play Ancestry Wheel of Fortune. How come under this Prime Minister, a strong Indigenous woman gets fired for telling the truth when a weak, fake Indigenous man gets to keep his job after lying? <laughs> I love how the quote from Jody wilson Rainbow said him and the other Randy. Like, just fire them both. <laughs> now... <laughs> You're not allowed to impugn his honor. For some reason, you have to maintain that he's an honorable human being. This is what happens when you have a room full of lawyers, I guess. <laughs> and so right now, it's Sean, uh, excuse me, Greg Fergus has to address the, the you know, the statement that um, Andrew Shear said. <laughs> Calling him weak. Oh, man. That's an understatement, really. Again. I'm, I'm going to ask the honorable, uh, I'm going to ask the honorable leader, sorry, the honorable uh, uh, member from Regina Capel who once sat in this chair uh, to withdraw that one word which was directly used to another member which would not be considered parliamentary and ask the honorable member to do so. I'll withdraw the word lying and replace it with telling falsehoods. <laughs> so he stands up reasonable as, as can be and says yeah I absolutely will withdraw that word and I will replace it with this. No problem <laughs> at all. Except... I'm going to ask 
the honourable member uh, to withdraw the, the word fake, please. Just for the speaker to clarify, the word fake, but the minister did. He faked all those fakes. The, 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 the minister is now no, admitting that he's not indigenous, so he needed to be something very white. The, it's, Again, right? Trying to be reasonable. You could see that they were just texting away on their thesaurus on the phone. They probably have a thesaurus app so they could find a different way to say the word, right? And, and, and then when he got to counterfeit, everybody just started to laugh. You know, the whole the whole conservative side. They're not behaving at all, right? And I don't blame them. It's enough bad enough that these liberal ministers are doing all of this stuff it's terrible that they would be trying to cover it up and trying to hide this is not just a liberal sitting liberal member this is a member of cabinet right this is a person who has the inner workings that he's the minister of, of employment you know what i mean so this is like a high-ranking guy to be creating this kind of fraud to be doing these kind of crimes he should be removed and sent to the back benches he should be stripped of his party status and be given an independent status i mean this is unacceptable and the conservative party is not having any any part of it today like they are they are being loud they are being boisterous they're talking over everybody they're not taking anybody's crap anymore and i don't blame them i think it's about time that we started to expose these liberals because liberals the right being far left they think that you have to stay with inside the rules and if you don't stay with inside the rules then they're going to call you out on not playing by the rules never mind the crime that they committed and they've been getting away with it for a long time but i don't believe they should be permitted to get away with it anymore however <laughs> MP Shear, he is clearly aware of it because you can see the laughter in his face when he's when he's playing by the rules, right? Which is <laughs> just the icing on just the icing on the cake. <sighs> oh, it's good stuff. I've always insisted, I'm going to ask all members please not to take the floor while the speaker is addressing Parliament. When the, the, it has been uh, a tradition of this place to ask very tough questions uh, to keep government accountable. It's important for government, of course, to provide very clear answers. But we, we try, but we try to do this in a way that allows people to treat each other with decorum and respect. At this point, he has no control over the house. He really should just tap out and get the, one of the deputy speakers to come out, and then he won't be a t <laughs> tied to this, right? But of course he can't because his vanity is getting in the way. He lo he knows they are all aware of the amount of people that are watching question period, that are Canadian people watching question period. That's what's got him sitting in that chair acting like he's somehow going to maintain control over this house that is already out of control. It's just he wants to be on TV. He wants to be seen because that is what this kind of... of personality looks for right if he were smart he would say these guys are not listening to me i'm going to step out for the day 
and there are, you know, three other deputy speakers who could come in and sit down and preside over the house. No problem at all. But he can't do that because of his own personality, right? <laughs> and there is no way in the world that you can tell yourself that these guys are listening to a single thing you have to say. I mean, they are guns a blazing. You know what I mean? <laughs> it started with member statements. This is <laughs> this is still the first question. <laughs> It's the third like ground. They went through like Sheer went three, but it's essentially the first like you know they haven't gotten to the block even once yet. <laughs> Madness. <clears throat> Don't worry, there's more. And so the honorable member has sat in this chair in this position once before. Yesterday we asked a number of members to when it was referring to a particular member to withdraw that same word that I'm just asking for today. I just asked the honorable member just to withdraw that word so we could just move on. Oh, Mr. Speaker, when I sat in that chair, I heard the word fake being used many, many times. I will come back to this issue later on. I will, this, I will come back to this issue at the, near the end of question period. We the honorable leader of the government in the House of Commons. So you see, they're not even, like, they don't care what he has to say. They're like, no, I heard that question a lot, that word lots of times. Because they know that they have to go and check the, the answer. And those people at the front table, they're looking at it right now. They're looking for all of those words, all of the examples, all of the times that they can say one thing or that they can say the other. That's what they're doing. They're double checking to see if the speaker's ruling is going to hold any weight. Anyway, so he gives the turn back to the government to speak to the... Uh, Andrew Shear's third question. Don't forget, we. This is like the first questioner. It's. <laughs> I mean, this is. This is like the wheels have come off. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, but I think that little display of disrespect for that place is ubiquitous of how conservative members treat this place. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, it is very trying to distract. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care what she has to say they are drowning her right out and i just want to point to the faces of the people around <laughs> look at the faces on the liberal party they know this is going to be the end of them. They are not going to get another year. You got one cabinet member who is working for the Chinese for sure. And you got one cabinet member who's trying to impersonate an indigenous individual in Edmonton. <laughs> oh, oh, you can't make this up. I honestly think that they, it's, you know, they deserve, they deserve to be removed from government right now. This is enough of enough of enough of enough. I mean, think of the list of scandals that we got going on with this government. Can we even really call them government? They're acting more like, you know, like we're just a giant bank for them. She's sitting down because the speaker is standing up to talk about how she can't be heard, right? <laughs> Going to somehow admonish the conservatives again. <laughs> this is funny. Right there, he misnamed the riding. You're not allowed to do that either, right? <laughs> he he said when uh, Lanark Addington is not the MP that he's trying to speak to, and they're calling him out on that, which is like one of the biggest faux pas that he can make as the speaker, right? Well, don't forget, you're dealing with the rules of the honorable now, and telling that a person is from an area where they are not is a big deal. <laughs> but what's even standing up there another two minutes just standing there while they completely ignore him i mean honestly but you should <laughs> you should have just stepped aside for the day you know <laughs> A 
it's at that point that he turned off the microphone for a couple of minutes. And then there was all kinds of incidents of it. They all chose to say that um, quote, right? So calling him a fake and calling him a fraud and calling him all of these things. In the end, uh, question period came to a, to an end uh, due in, the, in the normal course of things. And he had to remove three conservative MPs. He kicked them out. <laughs> because like but they of course they all got a round of applause <clears throat> they got a standing ovation from their side where they're living they got um accolades i'm sure if they were my mps i wouldn't want them to capitulate either i would want to know that my mp is going to call out the truth long before he worries about some traditional rules i just love how the liberal party and the far left loves to tear down tradition until it works in their favor i love how they want to make fun of everybody and everything until all of a sudden it's them and then there's they hide behind all of the exact same traditions that they tear down i believe that it exposes not only their corruption but their contradiction and i mean let's be straightforward you you got at least two cabinet members these are not even sitting members of the house of commons these are like they are that but they are more than that these are the executive right? These are the people that make decisions. So here you have the employment minister sitting in cabinet, giving a company that he owns a contract form a government contract. I mean, it is abs just that alone is, is enough to say, okay, that's corruption. Then it turns out that the company he's working for has so blatantly ignored the rules that they are under investigation for not just one, but nine separate frauds. He comes in front of the committee and tries to say that it wasn't him as Randy. It was a different Randy. He refuses to answer to the, cause he's also the guy that the, that's in charge of the, uh, that they're waiting for to see over the, the fires in Jasper. And on top of all of that, he ticked that he was an indigenous member when he was trying to get a contract from the government. This is corruption. This is absolute 100% exploiting your position. This is a um, conflict of interest. This is so many things all wrapped up in one. And we got Trudeau sitting down in Brazil saying people shouldn't even be worrying about, they shouldn't worry about how much they got to eat or, or having a home over their head. They should be worried more about the environment. He's not even stopping what he's doing, flying back and cleaning up his cabinet. He doesn't care about any of it. They, none of them care about it. And as long as the new democratic party supports them in the house, so long as Jagmeet Singh and all of the NDP do not vote no confidence, they will continue to get away with it. As long as they write the checks to the press, they will continue to not be investigated by anybody that has what is considered mainstream. We have to put up with this for another year while he's got 11 MPs in his, in his, uh, on his side of the house that are corrupted. We have guys that are lying through their teeth to get contracts. We got 480 million going out the door for the um, green slush fund. We got the arrive scam app. Jody Wilson rainbow herself was a scandalous fire all of this and still the NDP supports them. So now we can see what really we're looking at. We're not looking at a, a party for the people. We're looking at a party for themselves. We're looking at a group of people who are only out for themselves. And oh, I know that they're giving lip service to being, you know, looking out for the, all of the, the various groups of people that they mention. But in reality, they're not doing any of it. In reality, they're just enriching themselves and they are, they're laughing at all of us that, that think that this is a, a, against the rules because they have the majority between them and the NDP and nobody can push through a no confidence vote, which would trigger an election. Now I know it's fun to watch and it's, it's very entertaining and it's good to get a good laugh, but this is very serious implications. The things that are happening here are, are negatively impacting Canadians from coast to coast to coast. The decisions that, that Jagmeet Singh is by supporting the NDP so he can have his pension because he's so like, I mean, you would think that the guy would do the right thing. And then all of a sudden, maybe he could get some votes, but no, he's just holding on for dear life, like, uh, by his fingernails. I think that, it, you know, Canada needs a new mechanism.
when we have these kinds of governments, we should be entitled to have like some sort of a recall vote or something. Cause this is, this is just too much. And I'll tell you that MP Boissonneau or whatever has stood up in the house of commons and ridiculed and mocked so many people. Now he's awfully quiet, isn't he? Now we can see the reality of it coming home. And I hope this guy goes to prison for the fraud, for the theft, for the embezzlement, for the contradictions, for the conflict of interests. We have to put all of this front bench in jail so that five generations from now, they know better. They can say, no, I'm not doing that because the last time somebody did that, they got 15 years. But there's a long road between here and there. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.